In this short video I'm going to show how to shape petals for Marie Antoinette rose which uh, you can find a full tutorial on uh, on my website. Um, we have three sizes of petals here and we're going to be using uh, round tools as well as um, a Japanese style cut paw tool like this which is a, um, a wide one about five millimeters wide um, to make sure the petals um, um, are shaped well without uh, many f unnecessary folds I'm going to place them in a very lightly moistened cloth to uh, wet them a little bit or to moisten them a little bit um, make sure they don't sit there for a long time because uh, the colors might run and you'll end up with a uh, spotty petals or um, streaky petals which you don't want for these uh, smallest petals we are going to use uh, this Japanese style tool uh, and uh, they're going to be shaped uh, like this so we want to shape each side uh, with this tool to create sort of a heart shaped uh, petal at the end uh, I have my petals in piles of two they are uh, joined with a staple uh, at the bottom Make sure your, your tool is not too hot, otherwise you can burn the petals. So going, shaping one side first. Going with my tool uh, underneath the top of the petal and then shaping the other side in the same way. Moving the tool to the bottom of my petal. There will be some pleats on the side which is fine. And uh, this is uh, the petal that we are going to, to get. So these are the smallest petals um, in the rows and they're quite um, uh, curled up as the first ones. another one help um, using your other hand help yourself with the shaping pad as well to create a deeper shape on these petals um, this is natural silk it shapes really well so you can see it is a bit of a hard shaped uh, petal that we have here so all the little ones are shaped in the same way This is uh, shaping off uh, the smallest petal in the rows. The next uh, petal size is M. Um, these have to be shaped in two different ways. So half of these petals are going to shape uh, one way and the other half uh, um, slightly differently. Uh, these petals also need to be slightly dampened with, the, with our cloth. Um, and uh, the tool that we're going to be using is a round tool of a two centimeter size in diameter. Make sure it's hot but not too hot so you don't burn your petals. So the first uh, petal. I'm going to show how to shape um, half of these petals with this petal. Uh, so it is going to be quite a deep concave. Uh, we're going to go from one side into the center and a little bit past it and then turn the petal around and go from the other side into the center and a little bit past it to create a very deep concave. But there will be some pleats uh, on top which is fine uh, because we're creating a 3D shape out of a 2D shape. Uh, the petal, the fabric needs to go somewhere. So to achieve this if effect that we're looking for, um, we need to start shaping in the middle of the petal from one side of it, going towards the center. I'm using quite a bit of pressure and a little bit past the center. Uh, 
Then I'm going to turn my petal around so it's easier for me to shape from this side. And I'm going to go from the other side into the same petal and shape the other side. So this is what we're going to get. It's going to be quite a deep concave with some pleats on top and some pleats at the bottom. Usually we don't look at the bottom because that's not going to be seen. But um, half of the petal size M should be shaped like that. The other half are going to be shaped similarly but with a slightly bigger tool because they're going to be going round these first ones and uh, the rose is going to grow in size so it's it's better to shape them as a, with the next size tool which is a two and a half centimeter uh, in diameter so I'm going to change the tool and shape the, the same petal slightly differently uh, so petals uh, large petals are going to be shaped with both um, the two and a half centimeter round tool and uh, the Japanese style tool as well. I'm going to shape the uh, lower area of my uh, large petal with the round tool. There's no need to put any uh, pressure here really. Uh, we just need to shape the, this lower part a little bit so it, the petal sits well in the flower. Try not to create too many folds or harsh folds. So this is it. Uh, that's what we're doing with the round tool here. And the next uh, we're going to be using um, this Japanese style tool to shape the top part of these petals as well. Make sure the tool is not too hot because you can burn uh, silk easily. So turn your petal around and shape from the other side from you know we shaped the, the lower part from this side I'm going to shape uh, with uh, this tool from the other side so just using it your tool as a as an iron really you iron it a little bit here to create a concave on the other side which is going to be looking like a convex on the front of the petal. What you can do as well is using this tool to add a little accent on on the petal uh, where the, the little kink is. So if you just press with the side of the tool there you can see that there's a little fold there. You can also use tweezers to do that. Right, so one of these and uh, the other one in the same way. Use the tool to minimize the transition between the two shapings so it looks natural and um, and you can do the little accent from either side really. You can do it from this side. You can do it from the right side of the petal. So here are the large petals. Um, and last but not least we need to do uh, some tweezer shaping on uh, the half of the medium petals and uh, the large petals. That's optional on the large petals. <coughs> It's a good idea to use a, a scrap of the same fabric to test your tweezers on because tweezers get quite hot quite easily and you don't want to burn your petals you know, once you've done all these to them already. So it will be a little bit disappointing. Um, I'm warming up, up my tweezers in the soldering iron checking that they're not too hot. So um, here I need to shape the edge of my uh, medium petals, half of them. 
so I'm pinching a small section quite close to the edge of the petal and twisting the fabric onto the warm tweezers at the same time stretching it so that curl is memorized by the fabric Uh, try to put your thumb in the concave you've created with the round tool so you do not ruin the shaping you've already, you've already made. Um, it's uh, not too much uh, curling here, the petals are quite small, but you want this nice edge uh, to then be featured in your rows. So um, if you, you're doing it for the first time, try to maybe may, uh, dye a couple extra petals to practice first practice this technique. It's um, a bit of a tricky one to master but it's really really good. Uh, the large petals as I said um, it's optional you you don't have to do it but you want if you want you can also add a little bit of a very very gentle tweezer curl sort of uh, add a bit of more that more of the di three-dimensional edge to your petals. Again, try not to ruin uh, the shaping that you've already made with other tools. There aren't any big curls here, just very, 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 very small gentle curls. And um, if you think your petals have flattened a little bit, what you can do is you can use um, the Japanese style tool and uh, reinforce that shaping that we've done on the um, wrong side of the petals to make uh, this top part stand out a bit more. But um, generally, it's not it's not needed. So uh, also, I wanted to show how you can use the tweezers to um, accentuate the this little king in the middle, so you can use the warm tweezers up like this. So that does a similar thing uh, that the Japanese style tool in the center of the petals. So here are the petals for for Marie Antoinette and. Uh, more detailed instructions on how to assemble the rows uh, you can find in the full tutorial on, on my website. Uh, please check the links below the video.